Welcome back. In the last video, I introduced horn circuits to you, or NAC circuits, which stands for Notification Appliance Circuits, and we talked about how they are supervised. And it's a little, it's basically the same as an initiating device circuit, but it's a little bit different because, as we said before, if you put, a, if you just put 24 volts onto a horn strobe, it's going to turn on. And you need to put some voltage on the circuit because you need to supervise it. Some current has to flow through the end line resistor and back to the panel in order for the panel to know that the NAC circuit is complete, that somebody didn't come up and cut one of these wires. So I, I introduced, or I'm introducing, I guess I should say, this voltmeter right now. I drew the positive leg or lead of the voltmeter to the positive terminal of the panel and the negative to the negative terminal terminal of the panel and as you can see it's reading out a negative 21 volts or I'm sorry 24 volts so in other words the polarity is reversed right now and as we can see if we look at well these are our little alarm lights none of them are filled in none of them are none of them are in alarm they're not in trouble so we know there's no reason for we know the panel's not in alarm put it that way you can look at the little switches here and see that none of these are shorted like we talked about before a short circuit on a conventional panel is what causes an alarm um, and the panel just sees just sees a resistor and then it's happy if it sees a short it goes into alarm and if it sees an open if somebody cuts a wire it goes into trouble and this last this last zone here is just bypassed because again it just sees the resistor and it's happy it's not in trouble if I were to take this resistor off zone 4 would go into trouble even though it's clearly not really doing anything out in the field anyway so we know the panel's clear right now um, so it's reading a negative 24 volts and there is one manufacturer of, of fire alarm panels that doesn't work this way they do the reverse polarity like I've talked about they all do that but um, Edwards or EST their panels the labeling here the positive and negative is shown in the standby state so if this were an Edwards panel this would be reading positive right now and then when it goes into alarm that's when it reverses and that can be confusing because you know if you know, if you don't work on Edwards panels too often you might be in the field you take a horn strobe down your meter in the circuit for whatever reason and then when you, you put it back up the way you think it should be put back up and then you have all sorts of problems and you're trying to figure out what happened and you know anyway that I, I, I digress I guess anyway so let's see we this is what's happening in a standby state on 90 percent of the panels there you know they will they will if it says positive and negative right here at, at the neck that's meant for and even at the horn strobe it's got to be you know both that's in an alarm state that's in an activated state so if you put you know if this says positive negative on every horn strobe except for Edwards if you put 24 volts where that's you know the positive on positive negative on negative that device is just going to turn on so anyway let's see what happens if the panel goes into alarm let's say this is a school and this zone 3 here covers a mechanical room and the mechanical room has a heat detector and the heat detector goes into alarm. We'll talk more about heat detectors and why it, you know, how they short or why they short. But let's say this shorts. So this this is going to go into alarm. Um, and maybe there, there'd be some label on here. It wouldn't just say zone three, so that you know the fire department could tell what was going on. It would, you know, zone three would be labeled. This isn't going to turn out. Um, of course, that's not going to work right now. Anyway, this would say. This would say mechanical room or something like that, but it, it's not important. Let's type it in. You probably can't even see this. Let's say mech room. So zone three, the mechanical room, is in alarm. We can see there's a dead short right here. So what's going to happen over here? Well, now, since the panel's in alarm, the polarity on these horn circuits is going to reverse. So now this voltmeter is going to read a positive 24 volts. The current was flowing, even though this said negative, the current was actually flowing in this direction because if, as our meter showed before, this was negative. So it was flowing, it was blocked by the diode internally in here because it was only gonna let it go one way. So the current couldn't get into the device. It couldn't get through to the actual sounder or the, the strobe. It was just going back right out to the resistor and through. Well, now the panel's an alarm. The current's gonna be flowing the opposite direction. Now the diode's gonna pass it through to the sounder. So now, this sounder is going to be it's going to be on. It's going to be sounding and flashing and annoying. Both of them will be. So I think that's a simple enough idea. I just wanted to illustrate it with this voltmeter and make it clear. But as you've probably noticed, I, I've, I've expanded the panel a little bit. The first video we just had, uh, I don't know, I think three zones and I only used one of them. Um, and then the next video or the, the third video we introduced these outputs here. Well, I'm introducing one more thing right now and that is one of the most 
critical things to understand about fire alarms, and that's its relays. So you can see this thing right here is labeled alarm. This one's labeled troubled. And these are just contacts, really, because you can't see the coil, but there is a coil, it, it's, and we'll talk more about that in the future. So what is a relay? Well, it's pretty simple. It's a lot like a light switch in your house. There's three, there's three legs of this circuit, I guess you could call it. It's not really a circuit, so I shouldn't call it that. But anyway, there's three, I don't know, poles. Here's common. The C here stands for common. NC stands for normally closed. As you can see right now, before the panel, let's, let's forget the panel was an alarm. Let's say it was, it was still clear. This was normally closed. So in its normal state, this was closed. And you can see common is, is sh it's basically shorted to the normally closed. There's, common has a little switch here, like a light switch, and it would flip states. If it goes into alarm, this green line is going to go up here to normally open. When it's in a normal state, it's here on normally closed. So these two are a complete circuit right now. As soon as the panel goes into alarm, which it is now, well, now this is going to open, just like if somebody had walked up and turned the light switch on. It's basically the same, basically the same idea, except this happens automatically on the alarm. Well, now these are shorted. Now common and normally open are shorted, and these two are open. The same would happen on these trouble contacts if instead of this circuit shorting out, somebody had pulled a wire off, or any one of these circuits for that matter. If the panel goes into trouble, these are going to switch states. And there's different applications for that, and we'll get into that in the future. But for right now, we're going to focus on the alarm relay. They work the same way. And to help to help you understand it, I, I drew a picture that I think will... It's for an application that you know we all use every day. So um, this was a little bit more detailed than I really needed it to be. But it is what it is. So... This is my attempt at drawing a telephone, or not a telephone pole, um, a, I don't know, either, basically an electrical power pole, right? It's, it's one of those old wooden things, and here's a little transformer. And these are the power lines running that you always you know, see in your neighborhood running through the sky. This would be going to another one. So this is a power pole, and this is a circuit breaker box you'd have in probably the basement of your house, right? These are all the little breakers. You'd open up the, little, you'd open up the door right here, and you'd see all the breakers on and off and on and off, and you're probably afraid to touch it. So basically what's happening here is you have... I'm not going to get too de too great a detail here, but you have, um, this is AC voltage, this isn't DC like we've been dealing with um, on, on the, in the fire alarm panel, but you basically have a neutral, which is a little bit similar to the negative side of a DC, but it's not exactly the same, uh, it's not really that close, and then you have a hot, which would be either one of these two. There's actually a couple different, there's a couple different phases, sometimes there's three different phases going into your breaker box, but let's just focus on one of these, let's look, let's just focus on the white and this gray here. So the white's coming in and going to what I labeled here as your neutral bar. That's one leg of, of an AC circuit. And I think I will make a video on how AC circuits work, how power plants work, just to kind of give you an idea of, kind of illustrate the difference between um, AC voltage and DC voltage. But then here's your second, here's your here's one of your hot legs of your circuit. Um, and it's going to control all of these circuit breakers, it's going to power all of the circuits that are tied off here. So it's all the same source, but these are like little fuses where if, if there's a problem, if something shorts out, if this shorts to ground, it's going to pop this before it starts a fire. It's going to limit how much current can go through this. Anyway, so a light bulb basically just needs two things to come on. It needs the hot leg of a circuit, um, which would be similar to a positive, I guess you could say, if it were a DC circuit, and it needs a neutral. So right now, if I just hooked up hot and neutral to this light bulb, it would be on. Uh, this ground is just for, this is, 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 is for safety's sake, you're familiar with grounding, I'm sure, I, well, I hope. Um, there's a grounding bar in your panel, and then there's a grounding rod that actually goes literally into the ground, or sometimes to a water pipe, but hopefully into the ground. Um, and that's, you'll see that usually that they just use the conduit for ground, but just ignore that for right now. Anyway, so right now, this light, this light switch is off, right? So the light bulb's not on. If you walk up and if you just physically push this on, what happens internally in here is these two, which you could think of as say common and normally open, they're going to short. So when you turn this thing on, this is just going to get you, but you get the idea. Oh, this goes on, now this shorts, now your light bulb comes on. Now you have light. You come back and turn it off, and what happens? It just opens this up again. It just breaks one leg of the circuit. And one of the things I kind of want to point out is you don't have to open this leg of the circuit. This neutral can go right from your neutral bar right to your light bulb. You only have to break one leg of the circuit. If you just break it right here, it's it's not complete anymore. The light bulb's not going to be on. And relays work the same way. Relays are, you know,
know, just just almost the exact same thing as a as a as a light switch, except something. It's not somebody walking up and turning it on. It's something that happens automatically. So in the first video, I described some of the things that would happen in a school or you know in any building really. But let's say let's keep let's stay with the school idea. What would happen when a, when a panel went into alarm? And one of the things I mentioned is your fire doors would close. So how does that happen? Well. I drew this ahead of time so you wouldn't have to suffer through me trying to you know, do this under pressure. There's, a, there's my attempt at a fire door and my attempt at a power supply. So maybe you've seen these, maybe you've never really paid any attention to them, but most schools and many other buildings have m magnetic door holders. So the door, hopefully you can tell the door's open right now and it would slam shut if this magnet weren't holding it. So there's a little metal thing attached to the door and then there's this magnet that's power, it's an electromagnetic magnet. So it needs 24 volts, right? So if I, if I, if I just drew, hold on a second, I'm in the wrong thing here. If I just came down here and I, I, I took a positive wire to positive and I took a negative wire, or I, I shouldn't say a negative wire, if I took another wire and went from negative to negative, this thing would be held open all the time, right? Well. Let's undo that. If I want this to be controlled by the fire alarm, it's very simple. Hopefully you can already see what's going to happen. I'll take my negative, just like I took my neutral out of my house, I'll take my negative to my negative, and instead of taking my positive right to the door holder, I'll go through my alarm relay. So when the panel was in a normal state, if you remember, this common was actually shorting, was connected to this normally closed. So then I'll come out of normally closed, and go here. So in a normal state, this door would be held open all the time. It's going to have its 24 volts, or whatever it is. It could be 120 volts for that matter, and it could be exactly the same as that light switch um, uh, situation that I described before. They, they make both of them, and they're probably, you see them both an equal amount of times. Um, but either way, that you're going to take either the hot or the positive. You could, you could take the negative, too. You typically do the, the, the positive, and you're going to run through this normally closed. So this circuit would be complete if the panel were clear, as soon as it goes into alarm, now this alarm relay opens. Now, now you can see this positive. Where does it go? It's it's sitting right here on normally open, right? It's not it, it's not going anywhere else besides that. This circuit's no longer complete, and this door is going to shut. Now I'm a little bit longer than I like to go on videos, so I'm going to end this one here. But we'll pick this up. We'll probably get into a little bit more on relays. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.